We often use our coordinating dies when we're stamping, but what if we use them to create some interesting texture to our backgrounds? Well today I'm showing you how to use our coordinating dies to dry emboss backgrounds to create some interest to our focal images. I'm Verity and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog Pretty Little Button where I make paper crafting tutorials for the everyday crafter. Okay, so to create this card, I'm first going to colour a piece of white cardstock. So this is Catherine Pooler Designs white cardstock. And I'm using one of the new inks from Catherine Pooler that she's released in the last release. So this is Cranberry Fizz, which is a beautiful, rich burgundy red. It's perfect for Christmas time, perfect for your Christmas cards. But it's a great, beautiful red that you can use any time of the year. So I have added a piece of scrap card to the back of my card with some repositionable tape to create a handle to reduce my fingers from getting inky. And I'm using the direct paper method by just swiping that ink pad over the top to colour it. Now to add the texture to the background I am going to use the coordinating dies for the Peace, Love and Holly stamp and die set. So once I've used my snips just to break up the dies from one another, I'm then going to position them onto that background to create an interesting pattern. And I'm just using the smaller dies out of the stamp set. And I'm positioning them onto the card, clustering them around, starting off more in the middle because it will be easier to create the pattern if you start from the middle and work your way out because I'm going to have to dry emboss these dies several times to fill the cardstock up. Once I'm happy on the position of those dies, I then need to use an embossing mat. So this is like a silicone mat. I've got the Spellbinders Tan embossing mat and I position the cardstock on top of the silicone mat with the dies on top of the cardstock. So the sandwich will press those dies down into that silicone mat but because it's got a bit of give it will not cut all the way through and instead just dry embosses them. So you can see here I've got a dry emboss pattern from those dies I just ran through. So I then want to continue on making the rest of the background. I reposition some of those dies clustering them all around, orientating and rotating the dies for variation and added interest. And I keep running this through until I have completely dry embossed the whole background. And as you can see, you get some really interesting texture. And now these dies don't show the complete shape of the stamp. They give an idea of the shape of the stamp, so you get an impression that they are leaves or foliage. This would work really well with if you wanted to use shapes uh, for a more geometric background texture as well. Now moving on to the rest of the card, we are going to use the stamp set, the Peace, Love and Holly stamp set, to actually stamp and then die cut some of the images to add to the front of the card. So again I'm using the same stamps to those that I use for the dies for the background and positioning these onto a piece of white cardstock in my Misty stamping platform. Once I've then picked that up with my Misty door, I'm going to colour the stamp with two inks because there are some berries on the stamps as well as the actual foliage. So I'm first of all inking up only a select few areas of the stamp, not the whole complete stamp, with the cranberry fizz, making sure that I've covered the areas of the stamp that have the berries. I've just placed a piece of white card underneath my Misty door just so you can see the ink show up a little bit more. And I'm not, as I say, stamping all of this stamp. Now I am removing a bit of the ink that I've got into areas that I really don't need the ink on. And I'm using a baby wipe just to wipe this out of the way. This is just so that when I stamp the green ink, I'm going to get more of that green ink showing through later on. So as you can see, I've closed my misty door and stamped those down. And you can see the berries showing up lovely. It's a bit of impression of some of the rest of the stamp where there's some of the ink hasn't wiped off. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to stamp over with a green ink which will hide that colour. So once I've stamped the red I'm just wiping it off the ink and the red may stain your stamp slightly but they will clean up and it, they will stamp perfectly fine again. I'm then going to stamp up in a green and I'm choosing the new green ink from Catherine Puller Designs Deck the Halls and I'm stamping this all over I'm adding the ink to the majority of the stamp. I'm not really being that careful. I will just remove the green ink from the berries because we don't want that to stamp over the red we've already stamped. 
Again, just using a wet wipe just to remove the green ink from those berries. And then once I'm happy, I can then close my misty door and stamp it down. And this means I've now got some red berries with some green foliage. Okay, so I rotated my card and stamped those leaves and foliage again. So I had two lots of each stamp. And once I'd done that, I then added the coordinating dies over the top, keeping them in place with some purple tape. And then I ran that through my die cut machine to cut out the coordinating stamps. Before I add the stamped images to the card, I want to create the sentiment. And I have created a thin white card strip that I'm going to sort of hang from the top of my card base. And I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment onto this. So from the stamp set, I'm using the Peace, Love and Joy stamp sentiment. And I'm then going to stamp this in my WOW Clear Ultra Slow Drying Embossing Ink and cover this with WOW Metallic Gold Rich Embossing Powder. When heat set, the gold looks stunning and it really goes well with the whole Christmas theme. Gold, red and green go beautifully together, but it also will highlight a sort of a richness to the card. So I added this trimmed banner sentiment to the top of the card, hanging off one corner, offset to one side. And I just added some foam pads to give it a bit of dimension. And then I'm starting to cluster all the stamped and die cut foliage around this sentiment. I'm adding it with foam pads for different, uh, with different layers to create dimension. I'm tucking some of this under the banner and I'm placing some of this over the banner. And it's just drawing the eye to that focal sentiment, but the texture in the background with the partial dry embossing just adds a little bit more interest to the background. So it's not a completely flat red background. So I've created like a swave around the sentiment, drawing your eye up around the card. I'm going to finish it off by adding some sequins and this connects lovely with the gold heat embossing because this Oak City sequin mix has a lovely selection of sort of bronzy gold coppery sequins, very different sizes. And I'm just scattering these around all the foliage that I added. And I'm using some liquid glue, Gina K liquid adhesive and my quick sticks tool just to adhere those down. If you are interested in any of the supplies I've used in today's video, you'll find a list of links down below in the description box. I hope you enjoyed today's video and it's given you a bit of an inspiration to get out your dies and use them to create some texture to your backgrounds. All of these stamps and dies feature as part of Catherine Puller Design's new release called Nordic Woods, which is a fantastic collection, perfect for creating your Christmas cards. So do check it out. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel? You can also hit that bell icon to be notified when my next video is up. Until next time, happy crafting!